racing is, is kind of like NASCAR, uh, and, and equipped lifting is, is kind of like indie racing, where there's a lot more variables, and when things go wrong, they can go really wrong. Um, with 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 equipped lifting, and and so they're both power they're both they're both powerlifting, but they really are different sports, just in the way that you approach them, just just the lifts. You know, that's one of the things I have to break the habit of killing. And what we're trying to do is obviously add to that curriculum from a you know, from a training perspective, a recovery perspective. But ultimately, what's what's the best pathway? And as you've already contested to, people are coming to this sport with so many different backgrounds. So are you going to chop that that X access route to to the UFC in, in half, or are you actually uh, going to promote it and, and find you know many ways to get into the UFC? I think you know we can look at things like the Olympic Games. Does MMA ever ever enter into Olympic Games and create a pathway? Who knows? And I'm sure the UFC. Are, you know, are looking into that type of thing in the future and trying to be ambitious, but mm-hmm. um, right now it's hard to define what's the, what's the optimal way and what the, what's the optimal way. Twenty percent out from their weight division, four weeks out, then we're going to have a little bit of a more aggressive strategy nutritionally because if, if weight becomes a primary factor. If they're ten percent out, four weeks out, then we're going to have a little bit of a different conversation and prioritization around the fueling strategies. And all of these conversations integrate within our strength and conditioning program, so that we're working in concert and tying in the workload in, into our own system as well as the, the training load that they're engaging with with their skill specific training. Now, when you vary the diet that you give them, it depends. What is, what is that based on? Is that and, and glycogen, sorry, and, and glucose that causes a lot of water to rush into the gut, and then we essentially feed them all the way through, um, like I said, breakfast, lunch, and then and pre-fight to support their, their performance on fight night. Um, I'm an outspoken critic of uh, cutting weight. I don't necessarily think it's the best thing for the sport or for the athlete. I mean, I think one of the benefits that we would get out of having more weight classes available is that fighters could get their body to a, the weight class where they're optimally at. Has there ever been any discussion? I know you guys have had discussions about PED usage and how to stop uh, adulterated supplements from getting to fighters and, and making people test positive. But what about some long-term goal of potentially eliminating weight cutting the way they've eliminated it, right? I mean, it, but it's more, more, it's more protected. It's more difficult to do. They have a, they have a far different regulatory system than we have as yes, well. We have 50 independent state regulators. Uh, we have Kambache down, yeah, yeah. Yeah, down in Brazil. We, we have different regulators. It's it's very complex, and, and I, I think that we, obviously here at the table and at the performances too, have, have that as a, as a primary kind of area of focus, mm-hmm. uh, but we're, we're working to affect the systems so, that can. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll sum it up. What Clint and his team are doing is, let's see the data. Like, let's collect the data. It's like, you know, what, what uh, Donna's been doing for the last couple of years, collecting every... Yeah. 